y'all. So this episode of Greenleaf gave me exactly what I needed. So let's just jump right on in and talk about it. Grace in this episode pissed me off at the beginning because I felt exactly the same way as Bishop toward the end of the episode. Every little thing that Sophia tries to do, you try to shoot it down with your negative Nancy ass comments. And I hate people like that. When you tell them something good, it's like, well, this and they always have a rebuttal. Girl, like everything that's told to you does not require a response. I'm telling you out of pure courtesy because I hold you to some sort of standard and I felt like you needed to know. But obviously she felt some type of way because Bishop revealed that she wanted to teach the little ones. And that's why he gave her a study Bible. And at that moment, Grace was like, wait, she didn't tell me? No, she doesn't tell you because she's tired of you shooting down and giving her a negative outlook on everything she tries to do. So hopefully this penetrates Grace's heart. Grace and Reporter Fox are no more. Damn, y'all. And, ugh. I hate that I feel this way because initially I didn't want y'all to be together. I wanted her to be with the security guard. But some kind of way y'all grew on me. And I was like, okay, okay, I can see where this is going. And then y'all come up to the point of Sophia's birthday and you'd like for him to go. You mention it to your folks. They are totally against it. You tell Reporter Fox that they're against it. And he like, you know what? Let's just end it here. Damn, Grace. It's like, you can't win for losing. You got your daughter, but then the relationship was rocky. You got Mac in jail, but then Mac got out. You got Mac in jail, but you had to bring down your father too. You know, like, ugh, it's always an uphill climb with you, Grace. So I really hope that things start to turn in your favor. Oh, and Bishop was pissed with you about whatever. I guess he don't know exactly what took place at the wedding rehearsal. All he knows is that you were in charge and now they're not getting married. So hopefully that is resolved as well. But I highly doubt it because that little bitch, she shouldn't be marrying nobody. No time soon. Okay. Jacob. Jacob in this episode seems to have a backbone, but I can tell right now that he is easily manipulated. And Basie Skanks is a good motherfucking candidate to do so. He is playing Jacob like a fucking fiddle. And as a consumer, as a spectator, I'm like, Jacob, wake the fuck up! Please! Oh my god. First of all, you find out that the church is getting money from this anonymous source. But the source has a name, but the source is still anonymous. You approach Basie Skanks about it, and he gives you this roundabout riddle of an answer. And kind of alludes to the fact that the man who is donating the money is the middle man. And then goes on to tell him very vaguely that he plays poker. And his earnings is where the money is coming from. Right off top, Jacob is like, nah. But Basie Skanks, being the manipulative motherfucker that he is, reeled Jacob right on in. Not only does he have Jacob playing poker now, he has Jacob lying to his wife. And that could go left really fast. And I hope that Jacob gets a hold of this situation before it spirals out of control. But it seems as if it may spiral out of control before Jacob realizes because he forgot to scope the area, apparently, because he left a $100 bill sitting on the floor. And Dark Skin Amber Rose found it. So he might have gotten away with having that poker party under Dark Skin Amber Rose's nose. But she gonna get to the bottom of this. You trust and believe she gonna get to the bottom of this. Charity and Kevin. The divorce between Charity and Kevin is turning really ugly. And it's all because of Charity. Charity is opening her big mouth and she's talking way too much. When they first decided to get this divorce, it was really smooth. It was really amicable. It was really equal. And they had an understanding. 
somewhere between Kevin seeing that Charity is attracted to Jabari and Kevin realizing that Charity is going around telling everybody that he's gay, his heart has turned ice cold. And I don't blame him. Because Bishop has now turned his nose up at him. Um, well, he's not turned his nose up at him, but he's like disgusted with the whole gay situation. Because when he alluded to uh, Grayson, he was like, this is not a coming out party for anybody. Hold up now, bitch. Don't pull it. And Lady May has just been the bitch of all bitches in this situation. She calls herself protecting Charity by going behind her back and putting this clause in the divorce paperwork. And she's like, I want him out. You doing too much, Lady May. You got an issue with gay people that is clear because of what you did to Carlton. But you need to chill, for real. And I'm so glad that Charity got in your ass and was like, I'm not going to let you do this to Kevin. And furthermore, I'm not happy about what you did to Carlton. Hallelujah. And when they showed, like previously on Greenleaf, that part, that part, ah, that, that, that part, um, when they showed that part, I actually thought that they were going to revisit the storyline of Carlton, but they didn't. Lady May need to stop spilling everybody's tea. How about that? Lady May, it was not your play. You needed, first of all, you needed to know for sure that you had complete privacy and complete disclosure with Bishop before you just rushed into his office and said that. Baby, the secretary was underneath fixing the fucking internet and heard that Kevin was gay. And Lady Mary was like, loose lips, sink ships. Okay, you can say whatever the fuck you want. But if this girl finds somebody that she knows she can trust, she gonna tell them. And word is gonna get out. Like, Lady Mary, you are really opening up a can of worms and this shit is gonna blow up in your face. I just feel it. Speaking of blowing up in your face. Pause. Ray Campbell's son is proving my theory to be very accurate. I can see that he is growing this attraction for Kevin. Kevin is really thrown off right now. And he's really in another place mentally. So I don't think he can catch on. But I can damn sure see it. Kevin. I mean, he got a good job. He ain't struggling. He ain't boosting. He ain't living in no fucking one-bedroom apartment with six other queens. You know? This might be a good look. Sophia and Zora. Thank you, God, that Sophia has grown a backbone and she finally stands up to Zora. It is about time. We can clearly see. And let me just say, when we first started this season, I was team Zora all the way. And I still am because I love me some Zora. I just think I love her personality. I hate where she's going in this storyline, but I love her personality. And I'm loving Sophia more and more as the season progresses. Zora, she knew that Sophia liked Isaiah and still pursued him. And look at where it's leading you. So I hope Sophia, first of all, Sophia, baby, she is winning, okay? The cards are definitely in her favor and the sun has shined on Sophia because Sophia got a man that we just got introduced to. Sophia got a new car. Sophia got a brand new faith. Sophia is winning. And Sophia got a brand new mind. I was so happy when Zora was like, listen, we about to go to this little club. You want to go? And Sophia was like, no, bitch. I actually want to bowl. And she was like, eh, who wants to bowl? She was like, I do. And it's not okay that you leaving, bitch. Every time. This is my birthday. Every time we together. You always talking about Isaiah. Or always on the phone with Isaiah. Damn, can I get some time on my day? The bitch still left her. I hope in the next episode that we see Sophia and that boy go in and really enjoy themselves. Fuck Zara. Do what you gotta do, boo. Because Zara headed down a path that you do not need to be going down. Okay? Oh, I liked how Bishop told Grace. Let Jesus take the wheel. Whatever's gonna happen with Mac is gonna happen with Mac. 
you stop trying to play God and bring justice to him. It's bringing you down, mama. You are bursting at the seams trying to make sure this man's life is destroyed. And what you're not even realizing is, it's doing more damage to you. Let it go. We need to see. Okay. It's just clear to me that we just probably not going to see Mavis no more this season. So, whatever. I'm not giving up hope, and I damn sure ain't losing my faith. But, whatever. We definitely need to see what's going to happen with Mac. I agree wholeheartedly with Bishop about telling Grace to take a step back. But I still need him brought to justice. I want to see Sophia and this boy's relationship develop a little more. And I also want Zara to come to her damn senses and realize, what am I doing? What's happening to me? She's always had a mind of her own and she's always been very outspoken. But baby, you in danger, girl. I want Grace to start preaching again. I want Grace to really dive back into her faith and get to the root of what's bothering you and what's keeping you from Christ. You need to get to the bottom of it. I want to see some type of healthy resolve come from Kevin and Charity's divorce. It doesn't have to be bad. And once Charity realizes this ain't about nobody else, so don't nobody else really need a say in what goes on between my husband and I. At that point, you guys will have a healthy divorce. But I doubt that it'll ever come because now you saying that you damaged from what Kevin did to you, but now Kevin is damaged from what you did to him. And I don't know if there's no coming back from that. So, we got a lot to see unfold. We only got two more episodes, so let's stick in there and same place, same time.